It's not even summer yet. <sighs> Today I'm doing a tart hoppy saison. It's inspired by Mike Tonsmeyer. I've said his name a hundred times on these videos. But he did an article on BYO and uh, this was like about a month ago or so and I took one of the recipes that he, that he recommended and I was adding lacto and then adding um, uh, you know, adding lacto first for a couple days at around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, then adding bread. Uh, it's not quite done yet, but I'm trying his other one of the three he had where it was uh, do uh, the same grain profile and then adding uh, and then doing all your steeping hops first at around 180 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes, cool down to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit for this one, and then add a Saison strain, add uh, lactobacillus, and add a Britannomyces all at once. So I'm going to try that. Um, he said it should be done in about a month. Hopefully that's the case. The recipe is uh, basically it's two row flaked oats and uh, what is it? And a little acid malt. And that's it. And the hops I'm using are Galaxy and Sriracha Ace. I think Sriracha Ace can provide a little bit more of that lemon to it. And uh, Galaxy's has usually good tropical stuff going on. A little citrus too. Uh, I've used it before for 100% uh, IPA. Actually a couple times and it vultured out great. So happy to see what it does for this batch. One of the main things I'm doing different this time is doing a no sparge. Now I've done that before. And how I've done it before is I've added, I just bumped up my grain profile and there, and I was able to run off uh, the proper amount without going above the recommended uh, water to grist ratio, which is 2.4 quarts per pound of grain. The last time I did this, which was last week, I ended up getting way too much uh, of, uh, gravity on the very first runoff or the only runoff I did. So I listened, I found a, a podcast by Brewlosophy and they did one where they basically put all their mash water right in from the beginning, all of it. Same grain profile, same amount of grain. The quarts of water per pound of grain is at like four and a half. It's way high. But they did say they got good results out of it. And what you have to do basically is calculate to just lose some efficiency with that. So we, some people get like 75% efficiency, you gotta go to like 68 or 65. Uh, so I usually get about 68, 67% efficiency. I went down to 63. Uh, hopefully that's enough to calculate for. The other thing that he said to do is you got to calculate your recipe. If you've never done like a brew in a bag before, to calculate to basically do a brew in a bag uh, grain profile. And he has a video on how to do that. And I'll link that below in my description. Uh, and so I did that. And then you also have to add more acid mold because you're diluting it that much. The, I guess somehow the uh, mash water, the buffering power gets all messed up and you're left with just too high a pH, even with your normal acid malt additions or your normal uh, acidifying additions, whatever that is. So I went up to 7% uh, of acid malt. I usually do like 6.5% and I'm going to cut the water a little bit with the silt water. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. I have lactic acid at the ready in case my pH is way too high. So let's do this. So uh, that's the pH, and that is after I fussed with it for a little bit. So I figured 7% asthma would be fine, and it wasn't. I was at like 6.5 on my pH, so I added one milliliter of lactic acid. That dropped it down to 5.5, 5 right around there, and I added like a, just a little, like two or three more drops of lactic acid, and that got me to 5.4. Uh, and actually this pH meter is running a little high. I think it's like 0.1 high right now. So my pH is probably realistically about 5.3 in that range. I definitely gonna have to add more lactic acid if I'm gonna do this no sparge again. I didn't obviously have enough. Uh, I could cut it with more distilled water. I only cut it with a little bit of distilled water this time. Like I think it was like an eighth of distilled water. So I probably would be safe to do half of the uh, sparge with, with the silt water and about seven, seven and a half percent acid malt uh, for what my water is when I do these no sparges. I'm doing it again. I'm gonna leave the brew day for about an hour, hour and a half. I'm gonna go grab a beer. Today I'm going to brew our beer co. It's a good time too. Mashing in, have an hour and a half. It's about 10 minutes away. 
Perfect. All right, now back to the brew day. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. I'm about to take a gravity reading. I'm not looked yet. If I'm above 1025, I will be very, very happy. My goal is 1028. 1026. This gets me a target finishing gravity of around 1047, so it's just under what I'm going for. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little gravity test 15 minutes before the end of the boil. If I need to go longer, no big deal, because I'm gonna do only steeping cups for this. So I can boil longer, I have the option, which is fantastic. It's going well, I like all of this. Ten. 45 and I have about 10 minutes left in the boil. I had to boil this longer for about 75 minutes because my surface area is so large on uh, doing like one gallon batches in a five gallon pot. I tend to, uh, I would tend to get higher finishing gravities. But this is kind of a different case. I started with a lower gravity than I anticipated, somewhat anticipated because of my really thin mash. Uh, so I do have to boil a little longer or go a little more vigorous than I did. I was at a simmer for about half of it. So I'm on track. Good to go. I checked it along the way. I'm happy. Ten fifty two, perfect, love it. So got what I wanted in the end, and I have about uh, 0 0.75 gallons in that range. Uh, I think it'll be a perfect volume from going for. I'm happy. We'll definitely see how tart this gets. Uh, I don't know. It's not just the iso alpha acids that inhibit uh, lacto from like doing their thing. You can also inhibit it by throwing some pellets even into uh, like a dry hopping or as it's fermenting, and it will definitely lessen the acidity for sure. I will see how much lacto city I get out of this. I don't think it'll be much because of how much hops are in this, uh, but maybe some will, will get in there. And I have extra lacto anyway, so why not? It's also what the recipe called for, so eh. This is what's going in this batch. This is the uh, leftover Dark Saison of 3711. It's been sitting around for about a week or so. I'm gonna use some of the slurry of that. This is the uh, quick sour I did that has a Brett in it, the WLP 648. I'm gonna use some of that. And this is slurry of the Brevis I used for the quick sour for this. Saison, 3711 slurry. Lacto Brevis. And for the bread, I'm going to just take some of the uh, slurry from the bottom of this and put it in. That should be enough, Brett. It might take a second to take off, but uh, it's in there. Okay, here we have it. I'm gonna ferment this at around 73, 70, Five degrees Fahrenheit and uh, yeah in about two weeks or so if the fermentation has stopped um, I'll take a gravity reading and then uh, do another one about two three weeks from there and see if it's stabilized 
and hopefully the whole thing has been stabilized in about a month and a half or a month. If it's not, I'll just keep letting it go. I do want to keep oxygen out of this as much as possible, so when I do take those gravity readings, I will definitely make sure I purge the headspace with CO2. And yeah, see you in the future for a tasting. Mm -hmm.